Hello and welcome to Analyzing Avatar. Dan here with you as always with the late airbender himself, Chris Billingham. How you doing? I'm good, you? Yeah, I, we don't do, do greetings on the podcast because we usually get those out before we could it, but I just thought, you know, people might be wondering how we're doing. How we're doing <laughs> four months in the past. <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. Presumably, uh, what is this? This is like late Jan, early Feb? No, this, yeah, this will be early Feb. So where are we? Where are so, we? We're November. Presumably, there's presumably there's still a coup going on in the White House. <laughs> presumably, I doubt it. Presumably, COVID's still a thing. <laughs> the, the word we got today, and this is so unre- irrelevant, and even more irrelevant to listen to this in February, where this is because I think this episode is going up in February. Um, the, 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 the word on the street is that he might walk out the front door. The day they ratify, like, well, either you know, the day every state calls, like, an official, once the electoral college actually put their votes through, he's going to walk, <laughs> which is Jeez. hilarious. That's so, well, ridiculous. And then yeah. expect people to vote for him again in 2024. No, he's not going to do that. He's not that stupid. Jesus. He can't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't risk having another loss. He wouldn't, he knows what that feels like now. <laughs> he's like, he's not going to risk it. But it's like he's gonna he's, he's gonna go it, sell his he's gonna go sell his book and start a TV network so he could pr- perpetuate more bullshit fake news. Isn't the isn't the rumor that he's not been or the the what they've said is that he's not attended like a COVID meeting since September or something stupid. It's, it's, it's four just, or five months he's not attended one yeah. But um, fully enough, now is. Joe Biden's attending those instead. <laughs> It's just madness. I don't know if he's attending like the official ones, but he's met with Fauci. You know, yeah, what? we should start. Ag- we we should start, start again. <laughs> This is a terrible what video. You, what do you think of this week's Avatar, Dad? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi, guys. Welcome to uh, Analyzing Avatar. We're going to talk about three-month-old politics for a few minutes, and then we're going to come back. <laughs> this wouldn't even be interesting if it was coming out at the time. <laughs> it's like, what are we doing? <laughs> right. Avatar. Avatar, uh, the, the Last Airbender, is the show we're watching. And this week, we watched Botto of the Water Tribe, an episode in which... Ang and Katara and Sokka find a water tribe boat, um, and it has a guy in it, uh, or a guy with it called Botto, who is somebody they know from back in the water tribe, someone who's been um, at war with their dad. He's been left behind because he was injured, but he's going to be rendezvousing with the rest of the guys at a later date. He's just waiting for the location to arrive via guy on a ostrich. Um, how all things are delivered, a sh- of the shittest delivery man of all time. We'll come back to him. Um, uh, the letter comes, but Ang has just heard Katara and Sokka debating with, or, or like talking about how nice it'd be to see their dad again, and he thinks they're going to go um, and see their dad and not and, and leave him essentially on his quest. Um, so he doesn't show them the letter with their dad's location on it. They find out he's been hiding it. They're all pissed, and then magically they're not pissed again. And uh, meanwhile, Zuko has gained a giant smelly rat thing and has used it to track them and with Katara's necklace. It sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud. Um, and there's a big, awesome, epic fight. One of the probably the best action sequences in the show thus far, I would say. Um, and in the end, they all escape and it turns out, you know, everyone's happy again and friends. Um, if you didn't gather from my tone, Chris, this is the other episode that is I, I debated alongside the Great Divide in terms of its quality. Um, there's actually a really yeah, interesting. Really? Yeah, in the in the according to iTunes, this is their lowest rated episode. Um, you know, on the iTunes, you can rate the content, um, but many, many believe to be the lowest rated episode to be the Great Divide, and on IMDb and stuff, the Great Divide of this often swap places. It looks like um, as two of the least favorite episodes. I sort of see why. I think this has the edge on the Great Divide, and I'll get to why later. But I'm very curious how you felt about it. Not, you know, having watched it without any of that sort of around it. Um, how, how did you come out of it feeling? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Like I wasn't like, you know, it wasn't um, that two parter that you know we had recently. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought it was right up there. Like it, I thought they did a good job um, of like because. I thought the monster was interesting. I can see maybe if people think the monster's a bit, I don't know, almost too powerful. I did I did sort of watch it going, how are they going to make us believe that this monster isn't always an option from this point onwards? Um, and I thought the perfume result to that was, was brilliant. I thought that was a great solution for not yes. only that specific scenario, but also, you know, that monster ran away afterwards and presumably she wouldn't have him. Um pervy pervy uncle fire dude made me you know that you know they towed the line there 
you know. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I have questions about whether they crossed it with that, but yeah, we'll come back to that. <laughs> I think um, they did a bit at the very end, yes. Um, yeah, arguably. Um, so I can see maybe um, it not, um, you know, that getting a reaction. They probably did cross it at the end. Um, but... You know that aside, I um, it was it was just a fair bit of fun. Like I thought there was some Ang's a bit of a dick, um, but he realizes you understand why. It's one of those episodes that reminds you that he is a child. Child, we got some water tribe stuff, which was fun. Yeah, no, I yeah. The more I think about it, like I had a I had a good time. Like I certainly wouldn't think. I don't think it was anywhere near Great Divide. And and no. you know the fight scene alone, like it certainly wasn't yes. boring. That fight scene was wicked. Like That's and incredible. seeing seeing the the big you know bear thing, whatever he's called, Appa. Appa. Oh, um, Appa, yeah, yeah. Seeing Sky Appa Bison. go up against Appa go up against the you know perfume creature nostrils, the rat, the rat cre- the rat thing, yeah, whatever it is. Let's call him nostrils. Um, <laughs> Appa v nostrils was great. Um, yeah, I'm. Qu- I'll be honest with you, mate. I'm quite. So the reason I sound like this is because I'm quite surprised people think it's the second worst episode alongside the Great Divide. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's like because isn't it's it? got some big hits. It's got some. It's got some tribe stuff. It's got mm-hmm. some heart with you know them saying no and choosing to you know at, at the end Jesus alone. You know we're you're our family and you need us more. It's got some mm. great action. Um, it's got some. Avatar v Fire Dude. I yeah, I'm quite taken aback. If I'm honest, Dan, I disagree. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting, isn't it? I, I I'm sort of somewhere closer to the middle on that one because I do ultimately well, fuck disagree you too. with. <laughs> 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 all right bye ron see you next week <laughs> um, um apologies for my you language <laughs> it's, it's uh oh we said worse <laughs> not sure. on this i don't think i think we've been we quite have, good on this we, i think yeah, not... i think we have i think because well it's been, it's been particular my one we got a message on steven university the other week that someone had been listening to it with their like daughter or something and i just was like oh god i hope you mean adult daughter like no one, <laughs> don't do this to me mm. they, they'd sat and listened to episodes of our podcast together which is lovely i love the idea of anybody sharing a podcast that way but fucking hell <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> like, I had to, I, the response to that comment was like, oh, "That's really lovely, and that's very sweet." But dear lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, sorry for the language. But, um, but can I also say, "My bad." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Um, so anyway, um, so yeah, with this episode, I, I kind of like I'm somewhat closer to the middle because while I I agree with you that it is nowhere near as bad as the Great Divide, it is still to me one of the weaker episodes of the series. I think it's saved from falling into like the great divide level by having um an amazing action sequence loose logic that makes the character choices make more sense it's not well handled i don't think and that's where a lot of the problems come from ang's choices particularly and then the random sudden change for katara and soccer is my biggest issue with this episode where they suddenly just go we shouldn't leave ang even though they were mad at him 10 minutes ago like this episode is one of those episodes where the hand of the writer is just every all over it fingerprints of the writer prodding the characters in different directions and it's it's it is difficult to to fully enjoy it on that level i feel like it almost needed some more rewrites but with that said the jokes work the action's amazing that last fight that last sequence from everything from the solution for the for the for the for the nostrils monster um and the fight between ang and zuko particularly the moment when they're on the the, the water the, the not the waterfall the, the well when they're fighting while i stood on the well i mean just dear lord like come on that's so awesome and the moment they both blast each other at the same time and it creates like a back thing and they both get blown back that was kind of like a captain america versus iron man moment like just so much good stuff that it all kind of saves it from falling into that because the problem with the great divide is not only is there a really questionable decision made by a character at the end of the episode that kind of undercuts a lot of the content the episode isn't also that funny and there isn't really any good action so it kind of just falls apart on all the different fronts um whereas for me this has so many redeeming qualities that it it just can't fall to that kind of like 
low, if that makes sense. The Great Divide yeah, probably I, is, I in my opinion, the worst episode of this show. And even then, The Great Divide has still like got some stuff we liked about it. But like, comparing yeah, the Great Divide them, is just the is the go to fan thing. I mean, there are there are. I I I would suspect I'd have to look at. I just pulled up a list up to see if anything strikes me. But there are. I'd say there are arguably episodes I enjoyed, you know, less than both of those, personally speaking. Right. Um, yeah. I, especially this one, um, which I am feeling quite defensive of. Um, I do, I, I take and see your point. I think for me, and maybe the script could have done more to show this, um, but most of the, like, if you view if you view Katara and Sokka's reaction as they haven't seen their dad in two years and their friend portrayed them, like, it, y- yes, it is hell of a turn. And uh, But I think if it would just a little bit more playing up the, you know, it is not a decision to abandon Aang. It is a snap, pissed off decision to hurt him because that's because they've been hurt I, by I'm his I'm not actions. referring to that moment. It's the decision to go back for him. That, that comes out of nowhere with no real shift. It's like one second they're mad at Aang and they're, they're going to see the father and then they're like, oh, we should go back for him. And it's like, well, what changed in the last two well, I don't minutes? think anything changed. I think the it's my interpretation, and, and I'm agreeing with you that, that maybe the script needs more to that, but my that's, mm-hmm. what I, that's why I talk about like that hot flush of anger. I didn't view it as them changing their mind. I viewed the decision to like leave to their as, senses. as you, do you know what I mean? As just pure yeah. anger, and that's them going. Well, obviously, we're not going to do this. Like, we need to go. Right, back. right. Um, yeah, that's it, and that's and that's what I was kind of hinting at earlier. Which is that the, the other thing about this is the decision Ang makes to lie in the Great Divide is really egregious. Doesn't feel in the spirit of him being like you know spiritual and a monk and the Avatar and all that stuff. Whereas here, you can explain these abrupt yes. decisions even if the script doesn't really make it clear or like lay it out in a way that I think is satisfying. Um, mm. I agree with you that Aang's choice to... Uh, a lot of, I, I think a lot of people's anger at this episode hinges on Aang being such an unlikable character in this episode. And he is. But, he I, is. Agree with what, but I agree with what you said in the beginning, which is... It is an, it's a symptom of his being still being such a, a child. You know, he is a child. He's 12. Like, mm. children make selfish decisions all the time. So I've never, my problem with this episode has never been on, on that point. Um, but I do think that what would have saved this episode from that criticism and my criticism of it feeling like soccer and Katara just change on the flip of a coin because the script needs them to is because it's just not very clear how they're feeling because it's not been expressed properly. And if it was clearer, it might be more satisfying and you'd have less of those problems. I think if it was clearer that Ang realized he was being immature and childish and like actually hit, hit that angle have him say that mm-hmm. maybe yeah that's fair. and maybe yeah. or maybe have soccer say you know we were we, we were mad like we were angry but we, we we've come to our senses like this is not the way to do it something to give it just a bit more clarity as to what they're thinking because you're right you can absolutely watch this episode analyze it and go okay i think it's this and this and this but the episode is not explicit about that i don't think and yeah, i think yeah, that's yeah, where no, a lot of that. people's displeasure from this episode comes from and it is it's that it's the hand of the writer thing i know it keeps coming up but it is really really apparent in in this show when that when the writers are really pushing for something to happen and thankfully it, that happens less as the show goes on it starts to get more naturalistic as it comes forward but it does seem to me that that a lot of these problems that people have with the first handful of episodes of this series are usually stem from that <laughs> you know I admit, although, I, although i loved the conclusion when that conclusion when the perfume conclusion um and you know that being the resolution for mm-hmm. um for nostrils i was like a part <laughs> nostrils, of me did go, is, nostrils is such a missed opportunity that animal uh, absolutely should have been called nostrils like I, every time you say it i'm like that's brilliant like why is that animal not called nostrils <laughs> it is now someone add someone add it to the wiki um yeah. this animal was this creature was nicknamed nostrils on episode 15 of, <laughs> <laughs> Rising um i will say when that conclusion happened part of me did go oh that's why the perfume was so ham-fisted in uh it was so crowbarred in earlier you know with like the it's soccer's joke is funny and the fact that it doesn't get a laugh is funny but that them getting woken up with the perfume it, i was like oh okay that's that's why we've yes. been really hammering that they make perfume <laughs> yeah almost certainly um so yeah where do you 
Yeah, I like. I, it's it's the problem with a lot of these episodes. It just keeps coming back to it. With these early ones, I should say. I, I definitely want to clarify that. I don't feel like this is a continual problem. It's like they're learning how to be a little bit more subtle. And you know, they they like they, the last episode, last couple of episodes haven't really had as much of that as some of the early early ones. So you could already see them learning it. This is kind of a step back for me. Um, but it isn't the worst, and I, and it's interesting because when we started recording these, and I when we finally sort of said on the Discord, oh, we're, we're doing the Avatar thing, which was actually we were still fairly into recording. We were we'd done like eight or nine, I think, at that point. Um, we were just about to record the Great Divide, actually. So I had said oh, it was going to be interesting. We're about to record the Great Divide. That's when I sort of we had sort of announced on the Discord we were going to be doing this. And I, and I and someone was saying, oh, yeah, you know, the worst episode. And it was a bit of discussion about that being the worst episode. And then literally, I can't remember who, maybe Bianca, but somebody t- on the Discord put, uh, Botto of the Water Tribe entered the chat. <laughs> as like to, as <laughs> to say, yeah, yeah, but there's, there's worse. So I definitely a lot of people feel this episode strongly is, is, is worse than The Great Divide. Um, I don't I personally agree with that for the reasons I've listed. But yeah, it's, it's, it's immediate, the... The the Great Divide versus this one as those two like kind of considered to be weaker episodes is is a very clear trend amongst fans, which is very is interesting if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, I uh, but I I jump way more to this episode's defense for for you know the reasons we've already discussed. Like, don't you mm-hmm. think to some degree, and this you know this is to to lead us on to talk about it as well. The I just as a fan, I'm and I'm not you know insulting anyone that doesn't feel this way. I'm just like. How does the action alone not elevate it? How does that fight yes. between the two of them and the fight between um, um, the nostrils um, and a... I've I, I still forgotten how to say his name. I even though I got it right. Apaka? Appa. 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 Sorry, I was adding a C. Um, <laughs> how does Appa v nostrils and Ang v fire dude not that alone like angry fire dude for me yes. was what harry potter was trying to do done the right way you know we talked on the podcast on other podcast a lot about how one of our big criticisms of the harry potter movies is the the ones became laser swords in the later movies well they um, became they, guns they were just <laughs> guns yeah they were just yeah. guns that shot out you know red sparks or green sparks um, and yeah. that's not what they were in the books. And it, it, it's, it also just just not, it's also just the laziest, least interesting thing to do with them. They can literally make anything. They've got magic, and all they're doing is just shooting sparks at each other. It's insane. Like, how lazy is that on the filmmaker's part? Have people turning trees into giant snakes and hitting them with them, or, whatever, or you know, using their ones to create shields to block from that? And they, 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 The closest they got was the Dumbledore-Voldemort uh, battle from in, the, uh, the Phoenix. Phoenix. But yeah. all the creative stuff they do in that is taken directly from the book and not an invention of the screenwriter. <laughs> and even then, if memory serves, it didn't do them all. Um, no, and no. It, you know. I I uh I always imagined that way more cartoony than it it becomes in the uh, in the films, which you know mm. doesn't I get why, but um, although you could argue they could have set that style from the beginning anyway, um, yeah. So I just felt like you say like, and I hadn't even thought, but yeah, that kind of especially when they're like above the well and stuff, that symbolism of the parallels between that and Captain America and Iron Man, it just it just looked awesome. Like and the well mm-hmm. thing, like I couldn't work out maybe because I thought that was going to be a um a bigger moment because I I realised that it was it was air that he used, but I was like, oh shit, maybe Ang's used some of his water learnings. You know, it's nice to see him fight fight with water. Um, whether it was that, or whether he just shot himself up with air, who knows. But um, yeah, I thought it was. Uh, yeah, I, I, I still alone. don't know for sure if he used water bending or not there, because mm. y- you could explain that either way, couldn't you? Like the, 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 he bursts out, and if he used air to burst out, you could argue that would massively disturb the water underneath if he did it powerfully enough, which would lead the water to like burst up and then come down as rain, which I thought was such an epic shot, by the way. Um, it looks you know, he awesome. Or superhero, and then it literally stops raining from the water he's launched into the air from his move. Uh, but I can't tell if it's that, or if he actually shot the water up, and that's what brought him to the surface. Um, I, I, I still don't know which, but either way, no. I mean... Either way, it's either, cool. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome moment. No, I, I agree with you. It's, it's probably one of the best fights, certainly one of the best fights the show has done so far. Um, and I still think, even even when we get to the end of the show, like, 
I still think if I was to ask you to like rate some of the best fights from the show, this would st- still mix in there. There are some really good ones coming up, obviously. The show only ever gets better at doing that. But this one is so good. It really does. When I, I, when I think back to some of the action from the first season, this always sticks out as one of the best things about it. Yeah, um, and, it's, and it's hard to... You can't, dis- you can't dismiss the you know what that adds to the show when you're sort of trying to like talk about which episodes are weaker and stuff it's got such a great sequence of events it's hard to really i don't know it's kind of it's hard to like to dismiss an episode that has something so awesome in it (laughs) yeah completely yeah not at least to the not to the point of saying it's worst again flawed for sure um so yeah, yeah so let's talk about it. well we kind of already analyzed the character decision so what did you what did you think of botan himself then do you think that was um, um like intriguing or uh, i think when i first watched it i was just sad it wasn't their dad like i was mm. i was ready to meet their dad not some like random water tribe friend um but i think what was good about that the choice of using Botto, I think, is actually to make you yearn for their dad the way they're yearning for their dad. Because you're just like, I want the closure of that. So when it's not him, the disappointment you feel as a viewer, kind of being excited at the prospect of seeing Sokka, uh, Sokka and Katara's dad, you you feel it with them here. <laughs> you know, yeah. this Botto guy seems nice, I guess, but I don't care about him. <laughs> Who's this guy? I don't know. You know, random water tribe dude. Um, so yeah, I think it's I yeah, think it's handled fa- really well. I think it actually adds to your empathy for the for the for the for the brother and sister in the in this situation. I think you sort of as a viewer, you feel it for them. Do you think they did a good job? Because I did like that the the stories both gave us an insight into the water tribe and um you know their relationship with him of him almost being like a like an uncle figure um i thought it's quite sweet but that dual um use of also creating the uh the jealousy and upset and ang i thought that was clever as well yeah i i I don't think the plot on paper like when you're plotting it out is bad um i i don't think the, the you know the overall thrust of the episode having him come in create a little bit of jealousy in Aang, uh, have Aang sort of like make a bad decision and then contemplate leaving him, but then come back to it, you know, because they're making, you know, they want to make the right choice. I don't think like structurally there's anything wrong with any of that. I think it's just the way it's executed. Um, so I actually, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a fine idea for an episode. I don't think there's any problem with it. And I don't actually have the usual disagreement with this episode that people come up with, which is, which is Ang's choice. Cause like you, I feel it just really highlights his immaturity. And I think that's, that's fine. I think that's, I think to be reminded Ang is a child only adds to the overall show, right? Like, you yeah. Know, and he does regret it quickly. Um, oh, that's a point. That's a, some, another element we've uh, we've not discussed. That's also w- fantastic. But I'm really like, I'm sorry, people, but I think there's a lot to love here. Um, the um, I don't think you need scene- to apologize for liking it. I think I think it's I think it's really interesting, and I'm and I'm glad you've come out that way. If you'd have if you'd have been all grumpy about this episode, because I kind of sit in the middle of this episode, like I think it's flawed, but I don't hate it. But like, if you'd have come out hating it, I'd have been like, ah, this is going to be an uphill battle for me because I don't hate the episode. So I'm I'm really relieved and thrilled that you enjoyed it like that much. Yeah, because yeah. I, th- I think that's a really good contrast and an interesting discussion point in itself. The, um, the sequence where they're like avoiding the ice, like, mm. and Sokka's just kicking ass, and like such a clever way to get round that. And they all work so brilliantly as like a team and the visuals again in that like when because I didn't know what the solution was going to be. So when the water rose um, and goes over it like genuine triumph yes. in my eyes. Yeah, I think that's clever. I think it yeah. suffers again from a little uneven scripting because they do this thing where they want the joke of Ang not knowing what he's doing. But then they get round the yeah. rocks and Sokka says to Ang like, good job. And Ang's like. Ang, well, he held a rope. Like you kept giving him instructions, he didn't understand. How you didn't die is beyond me. <laughs> like that chip yeah. should be. So, do you see what I mean about like on a, like like just weird little writing choices that make even good things not work as well as they should? Like again, on paper, this episode is fine. In fact, potentially great. But they just keep letting themselves down with the execution on this one. I, I, it's it's why it's such a. 
middling one for me because it is it, it's so many good ideas very flawed execution um and even so even that sequence which i agree with you is brilliant it's it's a great uh water we're getting to see a water tribe sort of rite of passage we're getting to see soccer use his ingenuity which this episode does a really good job actually they set that up right at the beginning soccer using his ingenuity to find the water tribe he actually sort of uses tracking and observation skills to find a weapon that he recognizes as water tribe and he sort of says, like, oh, there's a, there was a battle here. He finds markings on a tree. So this episode does a good job of establishing Sokka's sort of budding oh. skills as a, as a sort of water tribe, you know, uh, warrior in himself. But then they have this rite of passage, which is called ice dodging. But obviously there's no ice to be dodging. Um, so they do it with these rocks. But again, as, as good as that moment is, on, and it is how good an idea as it is, the execution of that is almost, like, hampered by the fact you're going, well, this doesn't make any sense. Aang doesn't know what he's doing. Like, <laughs> and they may, they don't even just pretend that's not the case and like say, oh, well, they taught Anger under the point. They actually highlight that Ang doesn't know what he's doing. They make a point of that. Like, yeah. how do you, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, how do you get around? Yeah, that's fair. Here's, yeah, no, I, and I did that did job with me in that moment. Um, because you can't really fansplain that in like, well, Sokka knew that Ang would be like that. So he gave, he pointed, you know, so that's fair. Here's a um, here's a soccer question for you though, which I think is interesting. Um, not not that anything we've just been discussing isn't, but um, I've just thought of it, um, and I don't know where I fall on this. And uh, this, I will admit, is probably a bit of a flaw. Do they do enough with soccer's flashbacks to justify having them? <laughs> no, <laughs> which because is such they a are shame. they don't really add to to it do they <laughs> no in fact if i was going to name my personal biggest flaw with the episode i'd name that because it sets the problem is it sets up you know parallels between bottas and um and soccer and it sets up soccer's character i love that you've got but, did you call him bottas is it not bottas what is it bottas Bo- uh, Botto. Boto, Boto. But what um, I love is Bottas is the name of an F1 driver, so you've clearly been... You, you're being right, so... In, we, we, I, so um, for those who don't know, I'm in an F1 like WhatsApp group and we, that Chris set up because a lot of his family like F1, but he doesn't. But Chris is still in that chat, which always amuses me, the idea that we're having these conversations and Chris just looks at his phone on a Sunday and sees like 30 messages and rolls his eyes and is like, I guess there's a race on. Hey, I posted, <laughs> uh, I posted last week to... Uh, you did, you did. It was yeah. an interesting point. But um, yeah, but there's a Formula One racer called Bottas. So I wonder if somehow that's seeped in. I'm, I'm going to call him, from now on, I'm going to call him Uncle Fan Favourite of the Water Tribe. Um... <laughs> But the problem, the problem, I, I do uh, like that. That for me is a flaw of the episode I, that I agree with and think is probably for me personally the biggest flaw because is it does. It, so it's, interesting... ju- it's just that they don't add anything, though. Is that it, or well, is there more? Like... Well, the fact that they they almost add more to Sokka's overall character than this episode. The problem is if you're going to draw those parallels and if you're going to make a point about Sokka. It has to then come into play at the end of the episode or be yeah. related, but it, it isn't. And they, I think that they, time would have probably been better spent making more of Sokka and Katara's reaction being a, an instinctive mm-hmm. gut reaction, making well, they, more of Aang being a child, that kind of thing. Yeah, they try that, though. I mean, they try to... They, they, show, they show Sokka remembering the feeling of being left by others. And then try to tie that to him feeling bad about leaving Ang, but it's not the same. It doesn't work. Like I, I, I can see what the writer's done. The writer wanted the the, the flashbacks, uh, understood the importance of, to the, of them to the overall context of Soccer as a character, and I don't disagree with the choice to find a way to use them at all. Again, on paper and in concept, in conception, this episode is fine. All the problems tend to come up in the in the execution. Uh, what they've done is they've put that in and then like gone, oh shit, this doesn't actually really relate to anything other than that Sokka's thinking about his father, therefore thinking about his father leaving. That's kind of thin. So they've tried to dovetail it at the end by making it part of Sokka's reasoning for turning back to Aang. 
but it doesn't really work because <laughs> it didn't, because the parallel isn't clear enough. So you just think soccer's a bit weird f- for going that way about it. <laughs> yeah, like it, it just it just does the logic just doesn't hundred. It only it sort of like fifty percent makes sense. So it just feels weaker for as a result of it. Like it, it would need to make complete sense, I think, for it to to be a functional use of those flashbacks. So I I agree with you. I think the flashbacks, um, as much as I. I enjoy seeing them as much as they do add to soccer overall as a character. They are misplaced here. I think they don't do anything yeah. for this episode. And uh, I think if you're going to use the flashbacks, you should make them tie into your episode. Otherwise uh, they, they, they do feel pointless and I respect the attempt to do it, but in execution, it didn't, the logic didn't really track for me. And it's kind of annoying because we never get to actually see him go to the kiss concert. We just see him like ready, you know, in terms of his makeup and stuff. <laughs> If uh, if I've accidentally <laughs> insulted some ancient tribe there, I I, I apologise. <laughs> I have no idea if if it is because obviously I did that before. So if that's I'm making a joke purely on his makeup looking a bit like Kiss. If that is based on any actual tribal traditions, I apologise. I don't know that. I don't. I didn't know that. Oh, if anything makes a joke better, it's the immediate backtracking and fear that came, <laughs> that mm. came after it. I enjoy, look, Chris. I'm not gonna lie. I enjoyed the initial joke. Thought that was quite funny. Yeah, maybe he maybe he never got to go to the Kiss concert. I'm on board. That's funny. But it was then <laughs> to, like doubled on, doubled up with, with you being like. But hopefully it doesn't offend any like tribal religion. Oh, it was anything, instant. But, it was it, it just instantly. I had a flash forward to you doing the triv and be like the makeup that soccer wears in the flashbacks. <laughs> What's not worn by the rest of the war tribe is actually this. And I'll be like, oh, shit. I think um, I don't think it's directly referenced or anything. I do think there is uh, there are many, many, you know, sort of like Inuit and like Native American tribes that have um, face paint as a warrior thing. But I don't think it's designed. Oh, this, this just looks particularly similar to Kiss's makeup. <laughs> Yeah, I, I yeah, I I I I recognize the, the similarity. I agree. I it, this, I'll feel the, what he's wearing if isn't that's in the trivia. No, it's not. <laughs> it's no, it's it's not. No. Um <laughs> but I you know, I I I yeah, the it, it's it's a reference to general the general use of warrior makeup amongst some tribes than any hmm. specific And that's not so that I think, is not the target so of the think, joke. The so target of the joke safe. is the fact that it looks like Gene Simmers. <laughs> <laughs> I have to bring it back up, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> what? Did, what was that? I just had a splash. I don't know if you. Oh, sorry, it was just a, a drink. I just got a drink. Oh wow! I, I, it was a big like. You know, it, it sounded. It sounded like you dropped an ice cube into a drink, but from like a foot oh, no, up. It's just. Um, it's from a water <laughs> bottle, so I'm able to. Uh, uh, I, I, it's possible I heard that more more so than the mic picked it up because the mic. Oh, I just directly up. splashed it in the mic, so. <laughs> Oh great! Uh, hopefully the audience heard that too, so I don't seem like a nutcase. Um, cool. So yeah, so I think there's uh, this, there is still plenty of good stuff. Though I mean, I like I like uh, I do like the uh, Zuko Iro plot in this. Um, I think that's pretty good. Um, mm, I enjoy yeah, I them going to that bar and. <laughs> Suko's like, you know, you're all filth, get out of my way. And <laughs> uh, Iroh's behind him going like, uh, I'm sure you bathe regularly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, uh, you know, trying to ease it. Um, and then I love, I love that your, your, your reign as guy giving nicknames is, is nearly over, Chris. You've been usurped by the lady in this episode who dubbed Zuko and Iroh Angry Boy and Uncle Lazy. <laughs> mm, that made me laugh. <laughs> um... So yeah, their whole plot was. I I enjoyed it. I thought it was. Well, tell me, tell me about your views on on pervy pervy Uncle Fire dude. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, Look, I, I don't mind him flirting with um, Aunt Wu because for those who don't remember this episode, that because they're tracking Ang, we see them visit two places we've that seen. That was Aang a visit nice touch recent. as well. I'm telling yeah. you. It's a good episode. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, this bit, I think, is executed well and is good um, on paper. I, everything about this works. They go back and they visit different places Ang and the gang have been recently, um, including the herbalist who has that cat. She's she's fine she's coming after you, Miyuki. <laughs> she, that's really funny. Um, and then they end up visiting Aunt Wu and Uncle Ira's like, hey, good looking, or whatever he says to her. Um, like Just blatant flirting with Aunt Wu. Oh, no, she says something like... Um, 
do you like your fortune red like good looking or something like that and he's like at my age um there's only one surprise left and i'd rather leave it that way and i'm like that's genius <laughs> like why is that sort of weirdly flirty all at once um so that stuff's all great um i think that's the right line for uncle iroh i think it's com- perfectly acceptable for you know uh for him to be like flirting with a woman from closer to his own age but i think him uh, per- perfectly pretending to have been uh paralyzed by nostrils so he could lay her on top of him is mm. a step too far yeah, i i yeah, mean i, I would have i would have even been probably okay i think on the line would have been him being like um ah oh, you're a very beautiful lady you know like or something like that would have been on the line but ex- just about acceptable but the actual crossing the line into like Essentially, I mean, it's essentially he's groping a paralyzed woman. Um, it's, it's it's not cool. It's um it's a it's a carryover, I think, from Japanese anime, which often have an archetype of pervy old man. It's a it's a very common. Well, I suppose these days it isn't so much, but f- particularly the eighties and like nineties, pervy old man was like a really common archetype in the in the world of uh, of anime. I mean, some of those early Dragon Ball stuff. Oof. Like, yeah, Master Roshi, particularly in Dragon Ball, if anyone's familiar, um, they'll know, uh, um, is a pretty despicable human being for a lot of reasons. I mean, even some of the non-Master, all oh, the characters. So <laughs> for those who don't know, in Dragon Ball, there are these things called the Dragon Balls. And if you gather them together, you get a wish. And um, at one point, I think a villain is genuinely stopped from getting his wish of like world dominance because one of the pervy characters in Dragon Ball yells out his wish instead, which is a pair of women's underwear. Wow. And that's what stops the villain getting his wish. That's so, crazy. It's 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 really creepy and weird, but it's that's you know so it's, bizarre. Yeah. It sounds, um, amazing, and also, it sounds incredible it, in the, <laughs> television wise, but geez. <laughs> it's in, it's insane. Um and when it translates, it always translates as panties. Oh no. <laughs> so it's just that, that, that word it is so not much good. worse. That makes it so <laughs> much creepier. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, I, I weirdly think it's kind of like a poke, a little homage, a little wink in the direction of some of that stuff from Japanese anime. But the problem you have in a modern nah, context I is you just I think, I think not humor's in, I think humor and perceptions have changed. I think it was absolutely written as a joke and it just hasn't aged well. Do you reckon, do you reckon that yeah. he, was, he, was, he, was, you think that was okay even at the time? Oh, I don't think anyone would have thought of it at the time, unfortunately. Um, like mm, the, maybe the, you're right. You, I mean, you know, with, as we've said before, you know, things like, like, like even, even, even this year, like, suddenly there was all this controversy. Quite rightly, Dan and I have been saying it for years about the sketch show Little Britain, despite the fact that two months prior to that controversy, they dared a sketch that I personally think was offensive, like as part of a charity evening. So uh, yeah, I think it's just, I think we are quite rightly uh, more aware of things like that. Um, And it's just, you know, because like what was Avatar 2006 or something? So, you know, it was 15 years ago. Um, You know, this was right at the height of, um, or well, no, maybe two years as you know there's a lot of stuff in friends people criticize now that only stopped airing two years before this if i'm right in 2006 am i i can look it up i think this was 2005 there you go so i maybe it's a maybe it's a nod but i i just think it's a joke that they just thought was funny and actually hasn't aged brilliantly like so many things Mm. It's so it's frustrating, isn't it? I mean, they, to be fair, they 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 don't really do anything that egregious again. I don't believe. Um, I think that's the worst of it in that sense. I think the show generally pitches itself really well when they. Want I don't to do think they. I, I, it's not. It's not like it's really difficult because it's, and it's obviously a wider discussion because. It was different back then. Shouldn't be an excuse, and isn't an excuse. Well, it shouldn't be an excuse. To ignore it now, but I think you know. Do, do you know what I mean? There is there was mm-hmm. a, you you can look back at stuff from that time, and there's a lot of stuff like this. I don't think it's necessarily fair to be overcritical of it 
retrospectively. So you can go, we recognise now that's not all right. You know what I mean? It's the, as we talked about in MBS, it's it's the difference between you and I feeling that shows shouldn't just be taken off. They should be a warning should be added to them. Um, the yeah, Warner well, Bros. for, for a couple is... of, for a couple of reasons though, and and one yeah. of them being that we should still be acknowledging. We shouldn't pretend it never happened. We have to acknowledge yeah, that, exactly. pe- that things are changing and people are evolving and opinions on these things are evolving. And the only way to acknowledge that is not to brush it under the rug. But that to do that, you need to put the, the message up front, the warning, the note that says, hey, guess what? We don't think this is cool anymore. <laughs> um, mm. uh, you know, this is pretty pretty unacceptable. I, I don't think products of their time should be, you know, should necessarily be censored that way. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, I think they should uh, by by pretending they don't exist because uh, I don't think that helps the discussion. I don't think I think it's better that younger people stumble across Little Britain now, covered in warnings, and go, "God, yeah, that's made me really think about that." Isn't acceptable? Why did they think it was in two thousand and you know six or whenever that show came out? Um, you know, I, I I think that's important. I think that's 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 good. That's the way. But it's um it's tricky with something like this because it's a kids show number one, and I don't think it's is it. Uh, is that egregious enough to warrant a warning or being removed or anything like that? I, I don't know. I felt pretty uncomfortable about it. Um, I felt uncomfortable about it, but I bet you or I wouldn't have felt uncomfortable about it when we watched it four years ago. No, that's, that's scary, isn't it? To think that even yeah, four it's years terrifying. ago that and it's been, and yeah. it's and that's not again. That's not saying we were right four years ago because we weren't. I'm glad that. You know, well, it's, you know, up until, up until it feels, like, genuinely, it feels like only this year, and I haven't actually seen this, so I've seen the film, so if I'm speaking out of term, is it the, is it the breakfast, no, uh, 16 Candles? Hmm. It took to I mean, this well, I year. mean, all of John, all of John Hughes's back catalogue yeah, is. But like it took, and I don't know we're going into a wider discussion here. But it, it took it took till this year for people to, to, for you know what I mean, for it to be like a a widespread thing of like sixteen candles is a bit fucked up, isn't it? Like so, mm. it's uh, yeah, it's just so it there. I don't think their intentions were bad or wrong. It has not aged well that part. Um, should it have a warning? Mm. Yeah, it's difficult because he. I mean, he is the villain. Do you know what I mean? Like, but he is also a villainous character that we have made to you know that we that we do to some degree Com- care Com- for to be it's fond tricky. of yeah i I, th- I think there's a it's, that's one thing this show does very well by the way which is making you sort of care for these characters who are essentially mm. the villains like which is which puts you into a weird position when they come into conflict like this because you kind of want them to get along <laughs> you're sort of like stop fighting guys hang out <laughs> i can't i can't wait to you, you know please uh and uh, dan will show me the ones i can read comment below with why I'm wrong to like the episode and, and your view on this topic because I think it is a fascinating topic and I think and I think also it, it should be a topic like I don't there's nuances and there's not I don't think there's an easy right or wrong answer to you know whether it should come with a warning or whether it should be edited out or or anything like that um and I don't and I think conversation is the right thing sometimes, not yeah, you but, know what I mean. Uh, yeah, agree. But do you not also? I also worry about how it's damage damages the character, like to a modern audience. Like, yeah, the, the character yeah, has seemed fair. wise and kind and you know likable up until this point, and I could I could easily see somebody having more of a problem with Uncle Ira following this episode than previous, um, specifically so for it, that it, bit is at it, the it, end. Yeah. Yeah, is it, and is that a joke worth keeping? Like, I don't. No, it's God, not no. Funny. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, a, <laughs> but then again, a, we've also we've also just said you shouldn't hide these things, you shouldn't remove them. So it's like, I don't. There's no easy answer. We're not we're not equipped to answer it. Two straight white dudes, fucking, yeah, very doing true. a fucking podcast where we talk about pop culture aren't the ones to answer that question. But I. I I think that but we it's are important. we are both what we are saying. We are very. We don't. We don't. I ha- we don't have the answer on what should be done, but we are definitely both firmly saying we feel that end joke is too far. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's problematic. Absolutely. Is is the way to describe it's it? It's very problematic because, um, as you and, said, and, and, it and, and, it draws parallels that are incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah. I uh, yeah. And while again, you know, 
context and time and location like you know in the universe and like maybe things were thought of differently about them but i don't think that makes it any better <laughs> like that 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 gives it context you understand how they got there but it doesn't make it okay so yeah, yeah absolutely. There's, there's something Definitely. i don't know i yeah i feel a bit i feel a bit icky about it i'd rather think it didn't happen that's my way to get about it <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Stripped what, from the what? canon in my mind. Uh, very quickly, we've got some of the quick notes I want to touch on, but there's no, there's, but there's one piece of trivia this week, so it won't no. take long. Um, I just thought, no, we we did hear um, their dad's name, um, Hakoda. Um, so it's, 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 it's only mentioned, I think, once. Like otherwise, they just say my dad, our dad. Um, but if anyone missed it, it's it's Hakoda. This is sort of confirmation of his name. Um, I thought Lil Soccer was adorable. Especially the the you know that first scene when he's all like I'm ready for fighting, <laughs> you know I just I I even though the flashback is ultimately pointless, um, uh, but as we said it does add to his character. I just liked seeing young Sakura. I thought he was a, a little, little, little cutie, pinch his little cheek, and then send him yeah, on his way, <laughs> not to war, roll, back the other way runs, to the to the village. He, he then runs off like I want to rock and roll on. <laughs> And then he sticks his tongue out and does the does the devil horns. <laughs> um, I um, really enjoyed all the little, as you pointed out, all the little hints to the past. Um, and you know, like when, and I also liked when Botto said, uh, "You have your father's wit to soccer," which suggests that <laughs> that, that Hakoda is uh, got equally sort of cheesy humor as Sokka has. Um, I also liked all the little hints to like water tribe culture that we hadn't really had like actually observed, but. We'd maybe seen them when we were in the Water Tribe at the beginning of the show, but no one actually pointed them out like their weird fondness for like pelts and animal skins because they're hunters. And I love this weird, like, you know, they, they've got their own food, of course. It just feels like there's this whole culture that exists. So when Ang is talking about not liking the sea, stewed sea prunes, but, you know, Katara and Sokka are like so excited to try the food of home. That just something very authentic about that and very, very nice. embedded. And it's done in a way that doesn't, it doesn't draw attention to itself in the way of going, hey, look, here we are putting in details about a culture. It felt like it was organically part of the scene because it was like it, the joke was Ang isn't a fan because as a, as a vegetarian, you know, he ain't thrilled with the animal pelts and he doesn't particularly care for the stewed sea prune. And so it, it kind of works in itself in the episode while giving you a wider context. Yeah, um, definitely. I didn't particularly care for, again, Hand of the Writer... I made the note. I didn't like the artificial. We'd love to see Dad. Ang walks away, but we can't. We've got to stay with Ang. Out of Ang's earshot moment. That's that. He just missed the good bit of the conversation. Ooh. <laughs> that's. I didn't that's mind pretty, that. I. That's no, I pretty forced. That. Yeah, but but do you not think it's partly forced because we've seen it so much? But that's not their yeah. fault. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I it quite I don't, I don't mind scenes like that. I think because you did because I did feel like oh like partly because it worked on me at least I did go oh shit he just oh he didn't hear the relevant <laughs> bit. We, oh. I think we talked about I think we talked about this before nothing but static but post it note plots. I uh, I think somebody else on some of the podcasts dubbed this term and it's sort of been mentioned in a few places now and I've sort of picked up on it. But a plot that could be solved with a post it note. Like if, <laughs> like the idea that like all he has to do is get that one extra piece of information, they're not intending to leave him, and this whole story doesn't exist anymore. If your plot relies on somebody missing one very key piece of information like that, and you've got to contrive a way for him to not hear it, that's not great. <laughs> it might upset though. I did. I don't have too much of a problem with that, personally. <laughs> Yeah, I get it. I, I uh, yeah, it's it's a bit of a trope. It's you know, it's it's not the most egregious thing this show has ever done, but it's it's not one of my favorite elements. Um, let's talk about the delivery guy for just a quick second. That is the worst delivery man of all time. Do you know? Uh, oh yeah. Where, where's 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 Botto? I know Botto. We'll make sure he gets this. It's really important. I mean, it is my job, but I'm just going to give it to this random child I found who claims to know him and hope that that happens. Bye. <laughs> Yeah. Imagine if you ordered a parcel from like Amazon or whatever, and the delivery person just pulled up on your street. So a random person was like, "Do you know her?" Checks parcel, Chris Billingham. They're like, "Yeah, I know Chris." Like, cool. Give this to him. It's important. Mate, there's no way. There's, there's no way someone out there hasn't had that. 
<laughs> is that it's the worst it's terrible do you know, know what happened she, I, you know about when uh, we bought my dad an ipad for his birthday me my mum, and my sister all clubbed together to buy him an ipad and they That's left lovely. it they left it on the delivery person left it on the on the fence so not like on the doorstep on the fence uh, on the oh on the God. front wall of the house <laughs> Um, yeah, a neighbor, a neighbor came around later and was like, this, uh, this was outside, like on the wall. <laughs> and we were like, Jesus. So, yeah. That's crazy. Nuts. That is nuts. Yeah. So that's, a, that's a terrible delivery, dude. He's like really yeah, bad at bad. his job. <laughs> like, yeah. he, and could have literally been anyone. He's like, here you go, kid. This is important, but I'm not important enough for me to take eight more steps on my fucking weird ostrich creature to deliver. Like, <laughs> like Botto is around the corner. Like he, Ang hasn't gone far. They established those two places are very near. That's the laziest man in fucking the Earth Kingdom. Um, I also I've never know that the even when I, <laughs> I just love when Sokka and Katara are mad with Ang. Even the nurse, the, the nurses, sorry, the nuns are frosty with him. They're like, I think you should leave. <laughs> I was just yeah. like, why, well, hey, lady? Chill out. He didn't hide your dad from you. <laughs> like, we're so disappointed in you, Avatar. <laughs> I did like that when that became a joke later, though. When it, they're, they're like, "You need to go," and he's like, "I get it. People hate me." She's like, "No, no, <laughs> yeah, someone's after yeah. you." Yeah, that was good. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is the last note I have before the one piece of trivia, but isn't even that good. But there you have it's a piece of trivia. Um, there's a really subtle thing that I found amusing, and I never noticed it until this viewing. So, <laughs> nostrils bursts through right into the little, uh, little village that the the nun the nuns have set up right through these two double doors. It's like a walled village, and he bursts through it, and the doors come off their hinges, and he sniffs around. But Ang and Katara and Sokka are all long gone separately, but nostrils doesn't know that yet. And then they leave, and then it finds. Something on soccer and Katara, the map that leads it back there. When it comes back, the doors have been reattached, but really poorly, with just like a bit of loose wood. And then it bursts through and knocks them off their hinges again. <laughs> and I just thought that was such a nice little subtle joke that just doesn't need to be there. Like <laughs> if they've just repaired the doors and in comes fucking nostrils again. That made me chuckle, and I have no idea why. <laughs> I was like, good. it was because they'd done such a bad job reattaching them that it also made me chuckle. It was like such a clearly such a rushed job. Like they were still cleaning up from the last time this gun came through the door. Oh shit! That's a, now that's a swear that probably definitely should be an avatar. Ah. <laughs> oh well. Um, the, did okay, you say there's only one bit of trivia? Was the fact that the dad's name was mentioned for the first time not part of the trivia then? Oh no, there's, I, I have narrowed it down to one piece of trivia from. Oh, okay. I'm sure there was other non-relevant trivia. I didn't know. I like the idea of you reading that and going, claiming that one. <sighs> Going to present no, that. Right. No, I, 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 I know that one. In my, that's in my notes, Chris, from when I watched uh, the that, episode. Uh, yeah, I believe you. Yeah. Uh, I, I could pull up the trivia and see it. We can find out if there's a shit trivia of the week, if you'd like. No, no. No, I'm good with only one piece of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> that's... Chris is I trust actually you. just looking to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! It's, it's more my, my faith in sound, your trivia. That's the that's the that's the sound of a man who wants to get back to work. <laughs> no, that's um, the sound of a man who has faith in your trivia finding abilities, Dan. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Oh, the, to be fair, there were two. That the, the the according to iTunes, this is the lowest rated episode. Uh, ah, that, that was slipped that in. Was one of them. Expertly oh, we... weaved into the conversation earlier. Yeah, it was. Um, the, uh, the, the the okay. So there are three pieces of trivia in this episode. The the tr- piece of trivia I le- I kept was that in the scene where June is arm wrestling with in the, in the local tavern, the man she's arm wrestling with has a striking resemblance to Ryu from the Street Fighter games. Yeah. So there you go. That's a bit of trivia. Um, yeah, a little bit of trivia. And then the and the piece of trivia I eliminated, I just dismissed because it's not trivia. It's just what happens in the episode. Um, and this can be our shit piece of trivia for the week. Um, this is the first episode in which Appa actually engages in combat using his size and ability to airbend to great effect. No, I don't know. I think that's, I think that's worthy of note because he's not done that for 15 episodes. I think if it was like, if it was like, this is the first time we've seen um, 
uh, uncle fan favorite of the water tribe in trivia i'd be like mm, shit but because we've seen appa pretty much every episode oh, that's all right i did note that in my head i went oh appa's fighting yeah but it's in the episode it's not trivia it's just the content of the episode hmm. yeah that's fair the content of the episode should never just be trivia otherwise it'd be you know you, you I mean, should... how far does that go like oh this is the first now. time we've seen K- S- uh, katara do such and such a thing You should add that it's the first time their dad's name is mentioned, if that is the first time. But no, no, no. Why would I do that? (laughs) I'm not adding to the. I'm not adding to the wave of trivia that's just stuff that's in the episode. No, I think that's. I think that's good triv myself. Okay. You can't. You can't criticize other people's triv, Dan, and not be willing to stick your neck out with your own. Yeah, but I don't agree with that being trivia, personally. But why don't you add that um, in this uh, in this episode, whilst discussing this episode on analysing Avatar episode <laughs> 15, <laughs> Chris so and Dan like nicknamed if... the creature Nostrils. So look, if someone wants to go to the trouble of logging into whatever the Avatar Wiki's website is and like adding trivia about Hakoda being named here the first time, cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm no, not, no, I'm no, 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 no. You can't encourage other people to... You can't be like, it, it, it doesn't It doesn't feel like it's worthwhile trivia and then suggest someone else does it. I'm saying I'm not doing it, is what I'm saying. Right, well then it, it shouldn't be done. Great. <laughs> I don't want someone else to do it for you. I don't want someone else to do it either. I'm just like, I'm trying to appease you because you're still going on about it. <laughs> I'm just like, why is he still demanding I add this trivia that I've made it clear I don't like? <laughs> Not demanding, just saying. I thought it was, I thought it was worthwhile. Clearly, you disagree. Uh, yeah. Mm. You know. Well, you much know what, Chris? Like, I think, I like... think if you, I think if you love that trivia so much, I think you should add it. No, oh, I can't be asked. I See, much... well, so wait a second. So you, a man who thinks that should be in the trivia, is not willing to get off his ass and do it, and yet you expect me, somebody who doesn't think it should be in the trivia should make the same effort you're not willing to do as a person who was who's on board with it that's fair point yeah (laughs) touche yeah Yeah, yeah. no it's uh well argued yeah um good point good point well made i think you're right then i guess the trivia was shit fair point Only took us ten minutes to get to that <laughs> to get to that conclusion. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I think. Uh, oh, I'm going to add one. I will add one piece of trivia. Uh, this episode's trivia was rated the worst on iTunes. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I mean the, uh, the the your 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 fact probably isn't triv. I think that's. Uh, I meant that. I think the uh, the first the, the, that one piece of trivia you read out was good. Uh, the iTunes thing is interesting. The iTunes thing is justified. It's just maybe that third yeah. one probably doesn't need to be there. Yeah, no, agreed. I would agree. Um, so yeah, cool. So we, it's, uh, it's. Uh, where are we at with the show in general? Still, still, just, just loving it. I'm guessing. Yeah, no, I'm enjoying it. No, you didn't mind yeah, that this it's... episode sort of deviated. We're starting to, we're starting to move towards the finale now. Not like too close, but what are we? What was that episode fifteen? So there's five episodes in the series left. Yeah, I'm. Enjoying, I don't think it's as bingeable as Steven Universe or the Infinity Train, but that might be as simple as the fact that the episodes are twice as long. Um, <laughs> sure, but uh, yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm still really enjoying it, and occasionally I... I do have flickers of like I think I might remember this, and then I don't. <laughs> Did you have any of that this week? Uh, yeah, I was like, oh yeah, this is their dad, and then their dad wasn't in it, and I was like, maybe not. <laughs> so you had a flicker of memory, and then realised your memory was incorrect, and therefore turned out turned out it was bollocks. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It's fair. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm uh, yeah, no, I'm very much enjoying it. Mm. So, um, next episode is called the Deserter. Mm. Um, and I will. What do I give you a little little tease? Yeah, why not? The, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Ang may be trying to get ahead of himself a little bit in his avatar training. Mm. The little tease. Good little. That is a good tease. tease. Mm-hmm. Good tease. Yeah. Oh, no, no, there's, there's at least four pieces of trivia for next week, Chris. I've not read them yet, but oh, I've just pulled oh. up the page. Well, so that's juicy. something to look forward to. Yeah, they look they look long. <laughs> that and that and ten minutes of political chat that from four months ago. 
<laughs> anyway, you guys, you really... guys wait until April when we're talking about how good our Christmas was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, speaking of Christmas, if you go to the YouTube channel right now, you can hear Chris and I reviewing two Christmas films. If you missed it on the same channel as this uh, on the YouTube channel, you can hear us review. Um, what did we review? God, Night Before Christmas and Jingle All the Way. Um, both those will be up now. I mean, it's a past Christmas. Um, we didn't know we were doing them when we recorded the episodes that are actually airing at Christmas of this, so we couldn't promote it. But um, feel free if you want to if you if you want to feel some of the Christmas magic in February, you can head back to the Nothing But Static YouTube channel now, youtubecom slash static UK, um, or you can find it by Goo uh, not Google, but searching Rewind Reviews on iTunes and Spotify and wherever you get wherever you get your podcasts, where all good podcasts are sold. So there you go. That's, uh, I think, everything for this week. If you'd like to hear us talk about the deserter right now, you can do. Patreon.com slash nothing but static for as little as $1 a month. You'll have access to the episodes a week early. If you're already listening to this on the Patreon, I'm very sorry. You must wait a week. Um, I think that is pretty much everything. Oh, yeah, Twitter. I'm on Twitter, at Dan Doolan. Chris is on Twitter, at C Billingham. Billingham with two Ms. Um, I think we've covered everything. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Cool. So thanks very much for listening, everyone. I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham. We'll see you in a week's time when we discuss The Deserter. It's about a man who makes desserts. That'd be amazing. <laughs> teaches teaches Ang the final skill that he'll need in his avatar training. Baking. <laughs> it's like so the series there's actually four series. It's water uh, sorry, yeah, water, earth, fire, baking. <laughs> the, the, the fourth one, the uh the threat is Paul and Mary. <laughs> He has to fight Paul Hollywood. (laughs) Sweet. Bye.